Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today I have for you 10 my top 10 tips and tricks for the move command. I know, that seems like a lot, right? Move seems pretty simple. You click move, you click this thing, and you click where you want it to go. Yeah, it is, it is that simple, but there's a lot more that it can do, and we're talking about all those things, well, at least 10 of those things right now. All right, first things first. Uh, move command is up here under tools. You can click here to go to move. Um, it's also on the toolbar. Uh, I have it on the default toolbar as part of a large tool set. Um, but I'm going to tell you right now, the way to do that, to get into to move, is to use a shortcut key. The default shortcut key is the M key. It's great. It's right above the space bar. It's easy to hit. Uh, it, you know, it kind of stands out in the crowd. Got two pokey bits pointing up. That's kind of nice. So yeah, M is an easy one to get to. That is the shortcut key. Of course, if you want to change the shortcut key, you can go to preferences, shortcuts, and assign a different key to it. But as M is probably one of the more used modification tools, I would recommend using a shortcut key that you are, you know, you're going to want to smack a lot. This, this is a, a, a key that you're going to want to use a bunch. Um, all right. So here is something that we can do with move. So if you're in move and nothing is selected, when you move over something, it will automatically highlight. So if I move over this group right here, it highlights and then I can click to start my move. If I hit escape, everything's unhighlighted and I go to the next thing I want to move and move it. Um, this works different from pre-select. We'll talk about pre-selecting items in in a moment, but without anything selected, move will automatically select something based on where you click when you click. So it's a little bit different from other commands because uh, there you can use it totally with nothing selected and which lets you just come in here, grab something, move it, and then you're back out of the command again. Now you're ready to select something new, select move it, click to place it, and you're back out and ready to select something new. So it's kind of nice if you have a bunch of things to move or you have things you want to move to multiple locations, you can, without selecting anything, just move over the thing one item at a time. The other thing that you can do when you have nothing selected is you can not just move things, surfaces, edges, but you can actually move points. So I can actually move over this point right here, click on it, and now I'm moving that point around away from the rest of the model. This can only be done if you go into move with nothing selected. So to do that, of course, if I come in here, uh, if you tap the escape key once, you'll make sure nothing is highlighted. If you're burrowed down deep into multiple components or groups or something like that, you might have to tap escape multiple times, but escape will deselect everything, and then you can pick any point. You just hover over the point, and when it's highlighted, click and release, and now you're moving. We find the spot you want it to go, click and release, and it will place it there. I'm going to undo that because I didn't like that. Speaking of moving or distorting geometry, so when I grab that point, you can see all the other all the other edges connected to that point moved along with my mouse. I, I made a mess of this, uh, this block that I got right here. I can do the same thing with edges. So normally if I move over an edge and I click, and I start dragging it, I'm going to be constrained. Usually on one of the axes, uh, which is going to limit how I can move so that I don't overly distort the geometry. So right now I did, I did not hit an arrow key to constrain my movements. I'm just moving my, my cursor in a circle. You can see it's only moving back and forth. That is because something called autofold, we have it down here in the toolbar. See, I'm on Mac, so it says the modifier key for me is command equals toggle autofold. Autofold is turned off right now, so it's not going to let me fold up or change the geometry. If I do tap that modifier key, now I can move it in any direction and distort this geometry however I want. You can see as I move it over this way, it does cause that front face to break. So I have two faces there instead of one. If I come back here, slide this way. So you can see that's what autofold does. If autofold's turned on, I can move this anywhere I want. If autofold is, is not turned on, then I am limited to movements that don't break the connected faces. Great tip to have if you know that it's going to happen. Okay, um, 
I'm going to go ahead and I got some loose geometry. I'm going to make this a group and I'll just make this a group. Maybe we'll explode them later. But uh, I mentioned coming into move, which is the M key. Hop in there real quick and easy. Let's me hover over anything and move it. But there are some cases where you want to move more than one thing. Or uh, maybe you want to pick a thing first and then hit the move key. Um, that's going to let you pick your from and to point. Uh, the other thing I can do if I pre-select is I can select multiple things. So I can select all these bricks and then hit move. And now I am moving all three of them in one go. That can only be done if you select before you hit the move key. Again, if I hit move key, if I hit move before anything selected, now I'm in the click to select mode. We're going to pick one, but that is an option too. All right. The other thing I can do is when I do move, so I'm going to just pick this one block and I'm going to go into move. When I go to move, I can hover over the corners of this container. So this, this what I'm showing right now is only relative to groups or components because they're the only things that have these containers. Um, and if I go onto like a corner right here, I could actually grab it and move it from there to align that with another piece of geometry or something like that. If I want these two to butt up against each other, I could grab that and move it right here. Um, if I want to change, I can actually hit, There's a. if I watch the bottom right here, if I hover over my selected group, I have an option, lists a modifier key and says, click this to cycle through grip types. So if I hit that modifier key, I will change. So that went from showing me the corner points to now showing me the midpoints of all the edges. See that? If I hit it again, it'll show me the middle points of all the sides. Hit it again one more time. And now I get, whoop, there we go, the middle point of the entire volume. So just tapping that modifier key each time is going to give me a different set of points that I can move from. So a nice option, like I said, you do have to actually have, what you have to have highlighted is a thing that is in a container. So it does have to be in a group or uh, a component for this to work, but then you can actually choose where you want to move it from and uh, get a point at each of those spots. Speaking of moving, I don't have to grab a any geometry connected to the thing I'm moving actually. So if I select this, this brick right here, I go into move and I click on this point as my from point and this point as my to point, it will move that piece of geometry relative to those two points. A lot of people, I'm gonna undo, think that when you go to move, you do have to grab a point that is on here. That's not necessarily true. And there's some cases based on geometry. If you have real complicated geometry working in a, in a big built up model, you might not really be able to easily select the point you want to move, but you can always use reference geometry to move things the point you move from or the point you move to doesn't have to be in any way connected to the selected geometry. Speaking of moving, uh, this tip should go without saying, but it doesn't always, uh, arrow keys to lock. So if I want to move along this red axis, but I'm having a hard time keeping my cursor directly on that dotted red line, I can always hit the right arrow and that's going to lock the red axis in. And now I can do things like if I want this to line up with this piece, I can click right here and then that will have moved along the red axis parallel to where it was originally. Arrow keys are huge. Don't forget them. Sometimes it is easy to forget that you can do that. Get irritated. I can't snap to the point I want to. I can't move where I want to. You forget the basics, like using your arrow keys. All right. Uh, the other one, this is simple, but uh, move is also copy. So if again, if you look down at the bottom, we have this thing right here. There's a modifier key for copy stamp. And I'm, if I tap that key, whatever that modifier key is, if I tap it once, I'll get a little plus sign next to my move cursor. And then I can grab geometry. And then when I click, it will put a new copy in that location. The other thing I can do is I can tap that button twice. If I tap it twice, then I go into stamp mode. And stamp mode says, okay, pick my from command, my from location. And every time I click again, I'm going to create new geometry. And the cool thing is something to think about here, I can combine some of this stuff too, because I can come in here, I can go to move, 
put, turn on my stamp, and rather than clicking where I want to start from, I could use something like my, my relative copy again, or my relative move. I click this point and say between this point and this point, place one there, place one here, place one here. I don't actually have to connect, connect to any geometry to move with copy or stamp, just like I don't have to when I'm moving. That was 10. I was counting. That was 10 things. And I know some of those, okay, you probably maybe already knew about copy, uh, but uh, maybe you use the arrow keys all the time, every time you move, no question about it. But uh, I would love to hear if there's anything in there that slipped your mind, you forgot about, or you didn't even know about. It would be cool to hear that. If you like that video, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week, and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly, though, do leave us a comment down below. Like I was saying, if there's something specific in this video you want to call out, or if I missed something, is there an 11th thing about the move command that I totally didn't catch? Tell me about that down in the comments as well. Or if you have an idea, if there's another command inside of SketchUp that you're like, I need to go deep with this, tell me everything there is to know about this, let me know. Maybe we'll try to whip together a tips and tricks video for that command. Or if you have something totally different, something totally outside the box that you think would make a good video for us, let us know that too. Write down those comments. We read them because we like making videos, but we like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.